Can you break open these black box models? Anthropic started with this, OpenAI did it, and now Google has released something called Gemoscope. Gemoscope is a sparse auto encoder model. What is a sparse auto encoder? A sparse auto encoder has been in the play of deep learning to use a sparsity with auto encoders. Auto encoders are nothing but you don't have a label. For example, you don't know whether it is two or whatever it is. So you give this into an auto encoder. The auto encoder learns how to reconstruct whatever that was given as an original input. So basically it learns what, how the original input was created. Now, what is a sparse auto encoder is a sparse auto encoder introduces something called sparsity. That means only a certain part of the neural networks are activated, like it's functioning while others are penalized for being activated. So that means others are suppressed. So this way you can understand that what part of neural network contributes to what part of reconstruction. This is an, this is a way people try to understand what happens inside the neural network. So what Google has done is they have built this Gemma scope that will help you understand what happens inside Gemma. I mean, this is a very important aspect of how you can understand or see the research that goes in the direction of LLM interpretability. Now, this is a website that is from an independent organization, I guess, Neuronpedia. So we're going to quickly explore how to use this website and then see what goes behind Gemmascope. Google has also open source those models. So if you want to use the models are available on Hugging Face model space. Now we are just going to simply use this interface and understand it. There are three different things that we can do here. One is first of all, we can understand that is called microscope. The second is we can analyze the features like after we understand what is driving what. And then finally, we can steer Gemma towards a particular concept. So for example, if Gemma wants to say, I love you, instead of saying, I love you, you can steer Gemma say, I love, let's say something else like one little code. So that is how you can steer Gemma. So these are the three things that we are going to do in this video. I'm going to keep it simple. And if you want like an elaborative discussion on this, I'm always happy to make a different video. First, let's start with a microscope. So we go here, start with a microscope. So what is the goal? The goal is to understand what the AI is thinking. I mean, the language that they've used is almost like AI is some, um, let's say a sentient entity. Don't think like that. It's just not thinking something going behind the scenes. It's a BTS. Gemma scope breaks down Gemma's brain into multiple parts called millions of parts called features. A feature is something that activates in the AI's network when it sees a specific concept or idea. Like for example, if it sees the sentence words about cats, for example, when you send an AI uh, the message, I like cats, it activates the words about cats feature in the brain. What is Gemma thinking? Click a button below to send Gemma a sentence so that you can understand what is it activating. So for example, let's go with food. It's slightly easier to understand. So the text that is sent to Gemma is in the heart of Tuscany, a family owned vineyard pairs its robust Shianti with a hearty wild boar ragu, creating an unforgettable taste of Italian countryside cuisine. So when this goes inside Gemma, you can see the top features that are activated within Gemma. So one is references to wine and related events. So you can see the color of these words that are activated. Second is references to academic institutions and geographical locations. There is Italian, there is Tuscany, and you can actually see that this one word has been split into tokens. That is exactly why sometimes LLMs don't do well. Third one is you can see here that phrases related to food and dining experience, food related terms and descriptions, phrases that highlight unique experiences or opportunities. I mean, it doesn't seem valid. Phrases related to enhancing user experience in digital context. You can see all the features that got activated by this particular prompt, the, the input text that was given to Gemma. So now what you can do is, can you find a feature related to dogs and use this field to send Gemma a custom text to think about it. So just something that you should do. So for example, you can say, um, I love dogs maybe and uh, send it. So if you send that, I love dogs, you can see that it has references to dogs. Okay. Words near the beginning of documents, start of the documents, the and dog behavior, animal, animal related. So what we have done is we have given Gemma a text, which we thought would activate a dog related something. So there is a feature dog related within the neural network. We wanted to activate that. 
So the easiest way to do is send the text that is related to that. So now let's move on to the analyze features. Once again, quickly summarize what we have learned in this particular section is that we know that deep neural networks have something called features. These features get activated when a particular token, a particular message comes in. So we are trying to figure out, okay, what is the token that we can send to activate a certain feature? We don't know what are the features that are there, but we have tried to see. So now let's look at some of the features. The features in Gemmascope have labels like references to London. These labels are generated by asking another larger AI to look for patterns in a text that features activate that feature activates mostly strongly on its top activations. That is where SAE, uh, the sparse auto encoder plays an important role. In this demo, you will uh, try the job of a larger AI yourself by looking at the feature stop activation. So we are going to do what SAE would typically do. So we're going to just look at these words. Okay. So we let's say we don't know this label. We don't know what is it about. Okay. So all we know is we have three different tokens or sentences, and there are a couple of words that are highlighted. Now, if you were that, let's say deep neural network, would you know what is feature X? So these are feature X's top activation. What would you label feature X as? Would you call this as none of these? Would you call this as about famous city? Would you call this as about Olympic sports? Or would you just say this is about animals? No brainer, right? For us as humans. So a reference to animals. So we have understood that this is a reference to animals. So with the given top activations, it is possible that this is only about animals or something broader like living things could be anything. Fortunately, we can check. We can single out and test feature X manually with a custom text. See if you can write a snippet that activates feature X and lets you deduce the what feature this is about. So I'm going to give a text and then see whether it can understand like can I separate it? So how can I separate it? So if I were to see this is animal related, can I give some other living thing? For example, uh, I love eating plant based food, but my dog hates it. So let's see, test it. Once you send it, you can see the dog is what has been activated here. So the dog token has activated this feature and it didn't activate the plant based one. So you can be very sure that this is a reference to animals, not necessarily something like all living things or anything else. So you can see now nice. Can you guess what each of these features are about is a bold faced lie um, passport using fraudulent documents been lying out. So what do you think it is? So test it. Okay, I have to enter some text. Let's go with the feature. What is it about reference to lies? Maybe test it. Is it okay? Reference to lies. We're close. Reveal our label lies and falsehoods. Cool. Now instructions can be predicted simultaneously conditions improvement. I don't know what is it. So let's go with misspellings and typos. Okay. Okay. That is interesting. I didn't see that. There is a misspelling and improvement. There is a condition misspelled and simultaneous. This is quite interesting. I've never felt that there is a feature within LLMs that gets activated when there is a typo. That is awesome. So I would say that is awesome. Let's see if it gets activated because I've made a mistake. Yes, it gets activated. Cool. Years, the preaching is just a little bit. The metaphors of feel tired and unoriginal direction, heavy irony, the easiest imaginable targets, maybe like story related. I don't know. This is what stories and movies. I'm trying to figure out if this gets activated. No, 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 no. It's, it's oh, bad cringe stories. I'm not sure why this not. Maybe it has to be about the story, not necessarily saying story. So that is quite interesting. So, so far we have been poking around observing Gemma's features to think what it is thinking, but the real fun begins when we actually can change the behavior. See, the reason I made this video is again, like it's good. We understand what is happening inside the LLM, but one of the reason everybody is behind this kind of research is can you steer it? Can you make it go in a particular direction that can help you actually make the LLM say something that you want? make the LLM more intelligent. Like if you have seen the matrix, probably like, can you put a chip of Kung Fu and make somebody learn Kung Fu? So it's like that. So steer LLM. So now what have we got? We have got, let's put these features to use. We'll make Gemma give different responses by steering or amplifying certain features. 
imagine you are like a doctor sitting there and you know like there's a particular point in the brain where you can just put some current in there and then suddenly i'll be a great violin player now that is exactly what we are trying to do here so we're trying to activate certain features and then make llm talk that particular thing which it otherwise wouldn't have spoken you can think of this roughly as a surgically changing the way jemma thinks instead of just telling jemma what to do pick a feature that you want to steer with and the steering strength then just chat okay so what is a feature that you want to talk about so i'm going to i want to talk about um, let's say humor okay and strong but uh, i'm going to just go with uh, something very simple i'm going to say okay i love dogs let's go with that because it's an auto recommended one and the strength is strong so there is um, oof oof good good what kind of dogs do you find funny just kidding but i get it too much let's go with too much now i can say i hate dogs let's send this and see what is it going to give so you have got humor here and you have got the strength um of um, the steering strength jokes humor is laughs humor parody joke so you can see that it's starting to getting messed up because uh, you know the coherence is not there woof i understand everyone has their preference this is too much emoticon this is something that i've seen with um, gemma as well uh, i don't understand the use of too much emoticons so maybe because we said humor people humans use a lot of emoticons in humor is it i'm not sure so then we have to go with something else maybe let's go with misspellings and i'm going to make it misspell now i love dogs i'm going to say the same thing and it ideally has to respond back to us with something where there is a misspelling so let me know if you want to talk anything dog related it didn't misspell anything that is interesting and i'm going to go strong and uh, i'm going to ask something like um, what is the name of um what is the name of us president what a terrible question but i cannot blame myself for having a terrible question this is a brain freeze moment okay joe biden is there any oh just stop the emoticons oh my goodness okay but it didn't misspell anything so maybe i can go with too much and uh, okay so cool okay i get it so this is this is where the strength is too much this is probably like the average one maybe this is the too much joe biden let me know if you have any other facts um precedents not sure if uh, it's still misspelled anything it doesn't seem like this is like too much misspelling and um, yeah so this is how you steer gemma and then see how you can make this uh, do certain things so you can you can play with this app more there are like lot more things for you to play with you have got a playground to play with you have got an advanced steering also like if you want to play with for example i can go here and then say uh, that the most iconic structure on earth is now i can make gemma respond back on the topic that i want for example the most iconic structure on earth is like what would you expect like maybe eiffel tower cool now what you want to steer it with is let's say i want to steer it with uh, san francisco i don't want it to answer about uh, i don't want references uh, dog i don't want to say paris okay or eiffel tower i want to say something that is in san francisco so now i increase the references to san francisco i'm sending this by default this is the response it would have given so it would have probably said the most iconic structure on earth is great pyramid of giza okay but now because we told gemma to talk primarily about san francisco by activating san francisco feature now it says the most iconic structure on earth is golden gate bridge i hope now you understand the significance of this research it can literally change what the lm says maybe like instead of san francisco i'm going to go with let's say india i don't know if india is there let's search for india if india is going to be there uh, we can pick india if that feature is there okay they have indic related information so i'm not mentions of india i'm going to increase the mentions of india and i'm going to remove the mentions of san francisco i'm going to send the same thing now so you know the default answer the default answer is the most iconic structure on earth is the great pyramid of giza so now the most structure of okay maybe i <laughs> it took so much um, references okay references maybe i did too much let's send it again because it started hallucinating as you can see here it's not able to generate coherent text also because you know it may not have like lot of uh, text so it talks about most structure 
on earth is india so it says the most iconic structure is uh, on earth is india and as you can see here what we have tried to do here is that it is trying to change the way a large language model would think like for example where could it have a significance let's say i want to buy a phone and you are let's say a phone company now there are certain things that you want to let's say there is a an anti chinese sentiment in the us so you don't want chinese phones to be recommended even though that could be the default so now what i can go here and then say is that i can go here and then say that i want a response that is uh, something related to french okay um, and uh, just french maybe i'll go with just french and then send the text so if i were to buy a phone today i would buy that is a default response and it says samsung galaxy 23 here it did not change anything because the french text in in itself does not have any context to it so now let's go here and then try to find a company so i'm going to go find apple and uh, i hope it doesn't give me the fruit apple and um, apple iphone maybe i should have said yeah we have given now 30% references to apple and its products now let's try to send this again i'm going to remove the french text if i were to buy a phone today i would buy and uh, we have got the default response which is samsung galaxy but uh, in this case it did not make a huge difference let's try again with the 39 point reference it didn't it didn't make uh, any difference that's surprising but technically this is okay if i were to buy a phone today i'll buy apple so technically yeah so you just suggested apple to somebody and uh, this is exactly why this research is significant and uh, i think it opens up a huge amount of possibility google has open sourced this model you can use this model from hugging face model hub but i would strongly encourage you to go to neuronpedia play with the model understand what is happening just develop some intuition behind like what is going on here and i think this will be extremely helpful as we move into the future where a lot of things are going to be about llms see you in another video happy prompting